If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and attempt to answer the question on your own first before listening on. The question notes that we have an object known as an electric dipole that is placed in a uniform electric field whose magnitude is 40 newtons per coulomb, and so we have drawn a picture of what an electric dipole would look like. It is essentially a negative charge that is bound to a positive charge, and the magnitude of charge is the same. So we have labeled the positive charge plus Q and the negative charge minus Q to indicate that their magnitudes are the same. And when you place this electric dipole in the electric field, the field is going to cause the dipole to rotate. And we have learned perhaps in a previous physics course that in order to rotate an object about an axis of rotation, we would need to apply a torque to that object. And what we need therefore is to look at the equation for the torque that is produced on an electric dipole when it is placed in an electric field. And so in this equation, the Greek letter tau is used to represent the torque that is acting on the electric dipole. E would represent the magnitude of the electric field. We have P, which is going to represent the magnitude of the electric dipole moment which is indeed what we're trying to figure out. And then we have theta, which represents the angle between the dipole moment P and that electric field E. Now we haven't drawn the dipole moment, but customarily the dipole moment will point from the negative charge towards the positive charge. So we can label that P, and therefore the angle would be represented right here, because again it's the angle between the electric dipole moment P and the electric field E. Now, we already know E, the magnitude of the electric field, because that was stated in the question, so that's relatively straightforward. As for the torque, we can look at the graph that is provided, and it's going to be most advantageous to use the torque at this point right here. This, of course, would be the maximum torque, according to the graph, and we can see that the maximum torque is equal to this value tau sub s, and that was stated in the question to be this value right here. So we do have the torque, as long as we use the maximum value. We do have the electric field magnitude. The angle, in a sense, is also known. What's partially confusing about this question is that the horizontal axis, which contains the angle, isn't labeled. But of course, let's not forget that the sine of theta will fluctuate between a value of negative one and positive one. We know that from when we simply graph the sine function. If we graph one cycle of the sine function, it would look something like this. And of course, the maximum value of it is positive one, and then the minimum value of it is negative one. So again, that means this value, sine theta, will fluctuate between negative one and positive one. Now, of course, since sine theta fluctuates between negative one and positive one, that means that the torque is also going to fluctuate between a maximum value and a minimum value. So the torque would also kind of fluctuate up and down. What we're interested in is the maximum value of the torque, because again, that's what we can read from the graph. We just have to understand that in order to achieve the maximum value of the torque, we would want the sine of theta to equal negative one. Notice that, because we would have negative PE times negative one, which of course would produce a positive PE. And so the maximum torque is going to contain, or is going to equal the value positive PE. The minimum torque would be when the sine of theta is equal to positive one, because then we would have negative PE times a positive one, which would make it overall negative PE. So that would actually be the, the minimum torque, which we're really not interested in this question because we don't have that value. So we're gonna use this equation right here since we can take advantage of the maximum value of the torque from the graph. And so now all we have to do is solve this equation for the magnitude of the electric dipole moment. So we simply divide both sides of the equation by E so that it cancels out on the right hand side. We will now go ahead and plug in the maximum value of the torque, which as we noted earlier, is that tau sub s value, 100 times 10 to the negative 28 Newton meters. And then simply divide by the magnitude of the electric field, which is 40 Newtons per coulomb. And when you perform that calculation, you should get 2.5 times 10 to the minus 28th. 
As far as the units are concerned, we can look at the dimensions of the values that we divided. So we took Newton meters and we divided by Newtons per coulomb. Of course, when we divide by a fraction, we can simply multiply by its reciprocal. So we take the Newton meters and multiply it by the reciprocal, which is coulombs over Newtons. The Newtons would cancel, and that would leave us with a coulomb multiplied by a meter. So that's going to be the correct unit for the electric dipole moment, and this turns out to be the final correct answer. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up and then subscribe so that you could stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and if I have a chance, I'll post the answer to it on YouTube.